When you first learn to program, you are probably using a style called procedural programming. A procedural program is essentially a list of instructions that execute one after the other, starting from the top of a file and working down. Object-oriented programs, on the other hand, are built around, well, objects. You can think about objects as things that exist in the real world. Like, if you were going to build a clothing store, the store itself would be an object. The items in the store, like shirts and jeans, would also be objects. The cash register would be an object, and even a salesperson would be an object. An object-oriented program would focus on the individual characteristics of each object and what each object can do. So an object has two essential parts, characteristics and actions. For example, a few characteristics of a salesperson would include the person's name, address, phone number, and an hourly pay. In terms of what a salesperson could do, that might include selling an item or taking an item from a warehouse. As another example, a shirt's characteristics could be the color, size, style, and price. What actions could a shirt take? It might sound silly to ask a question like that since a shirt is an inanimate object, but a shirt could, for example, change its price. As you gain experience writing object-oriented programs, keep this idea in mind. An object has characteristics and actions. Before you start coding, let's get a better sense for what an object really is.